In this video I'm going to talk about the importance of contrast and the vital role it plays in black and white photography. Contrast is the relationship between tones and looking at this example on the right which is pure black. If I split the pure black and reveal white, contrast between the two is at its maximum. There are no intermediate tones. When I start to reduce the opacity of the black, contrast between the two is reduced. On the left hand side of the screen you can see a zone scale. This scale runs from pure black to pure white with eight zones in between. When I start to reduce the opacity of the black these tones are revealed but not just the eight tones there are many many tones. The application of contrast in a picture plays a vital role in how the picture looks and what it conveys to the viewer. In this example there are many mid-tones missing. This image runs from zone 0 roundabout to zone 4 and then it peaks out at zone 9 but with very little highlight value so this will be considered as a low key image. This image is totally different. It runs from roughly about zone 5 up to zone 9 and this is called a high key image. And this image has a full tonal range where you can pick out all the tones from the scale from this image. The skilled part is when applying contrast to an image and not from a purest point of view always wanting a full tonal range but from a visual point of view for a more aesthetic look to suit the image. Contrast grading in many ways is all that's needed to edit pictures to suit one's vision. Take this image for instance. I'm going to edit this image to make the foreground um, separate from the background uh, to give depth only using contrast. So I'm going to uh, inc increase the contrast in the foreground. Paint that contrast in. Then I might add a little bit more contrast. Now looking at the image just by placing uh, contrast to the bottom part of the picture how it separates it from the top part of the picture. If I add contrast to the top part the separation visually doesn't look the same. So that's with contrast all over and contrast just to the bottom part of the picture. So it adds a certain depth. And another more slightly complex image. In this picture I'm going to uh, separate the background from the railings um, by again using contrast. So I go to filter, the visa and then apply the contrast. Now this is more complex because of where the railings are sitting against the background. So I press brush, press the backslash key to get the mask and then paint in the, uh, paint in the contrast. Do this quickly so Give you an idea really. So 
So that's the uh, finished edit. Now if I um, click the layer off, you can see just by adding contrast, which I probably could add a little bit more, but I'm sure you'll get the idea from this. That, but adding contrast to the railings and just the, uh, the lion sat on the uh, pedestal and not touching any of the background, that depth is created in the image. It's not to say that you couldn't add any contrast if we wanted to add a little bit in the sky, but we would I'd reduce the opacity for that. Let's get a bit more brightness in the sky. So again, like the previous edit, this creates depth just using contrast. Now another way to use contrast, I'll show you in this image, Again, um, using contrast selectively, I can force the eye more to the main part of the picture, which was the cross and the foreground. And not destroying the uh, foggy look. So press OK to that. And now paint the contrast back in. the brush opacities up to 100 percent and then to focus a little bit of attention to this cross I'm going to uh, reduce the opacity of the brush make the brush quite large and uh, using a soft brush keeping the hardness down just going to increase the contrast in that area So we've gone from that to that, just by using contrast. So you can see from this how uh, grading contrast is such a powerful tool. And then the final example is this uh, vase of flowers, very flat looking image. Again, if I um, selectively place contrast, I can give this image a more 3D look. I'm going to increase the contrast. Click brush. And paint it again selectively. Make sure the opacity is up full on this. I could use the backslash again to see where I'm painting. The backslash, by the way, creates a, a mask so you can see where you're painting in. Puts like a red mask. I think it's to try and imitate the the darker days under the red safe light. That'll probably do. the mask and then reducing the opacity the brush again a bit more depth in those leaves and then a little bit at the bottom to the edges there we have it that application of contrast has now made that vase of flowers stand out from the the uh, background Obviously I'm doing this uh, very quickly but, and I could um, do it more accurately uh, if I was actually going to print this. So as you can see contrast is not just an overall effect, it has to be placed selectively for greater effect. You can use curves for the control of contrast or like in my workflow I use Viveza in the Nick collection. Having said that it doesn't matter uh, what you use as long as you have control of where contrast is applied. I hope this video gives you a good idea of how contrast control applied correctly can have a big impact on the final result. As powerful a tool as contrast is, there are other factors in editing that help in creating strong black and white pictures, contrast just being one. The other three elements are texture, tonal range and visual mood. 
If you would like more in-depth tutorials on how to create the four elements that make a picture, go to the link below and you can buy my contrast gradient tutorials. The video shows you in step-by-step -step detail how to achieve them. Use the discount code YouTube to receive a 20% discount. Once again, uh, thank you for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next video.